How many yeah, football no. players can you fit in a tank, bro? Oh, like seven or eight. <laughs> <laughs> So bro, mm. tell me about today, how you feeling? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good man. Uh, done with my session and, mm. and I'm here with you. Then after I'll go get some rest. Before we go out there, I have a very important question to ask. It's probably mm. maybe the most important question that we ask in the entire interview. Have you located where we get good jollof here in Denmark? <laughs> no, not yet. No, what yet. are we doing? You, you have been here a few days. We need to find this. Oh, I've been busy. Don't worry. <laughs> With time, I'll find it. Don't worry. And when you find it, we chop some more. Mm -hmm. You know, I have one, one, uh, one thing to get out of the way. You know me, I'm an Arsenal fan. Mm -hmm. Before you, in Ghana, there was no Chelsea fans. Because of you, you have made Chelsea fans. I just want to say I'm very upset with you for this. I can't forgive you. Because so why? Why, why would you make people support Chelsea in Ghana? It's not fair. Because they are like tired it. of supporting Nationals. <laughs> <laughs> so they have to make the switch <laughs> for something new. <laughs> what's the typical day like so far? Obviously, you've been here a few days, so you're getting used to it. What's, what's, what's your day like? Well, just, you know, getting used to this, uh, you know, the coaching uh, aspect of the game. So my day starts very early. Uh, Eight o'clock, we, we meet. Uh, in the office, talk, you know, plan the sessions, and we come out, set up everything before the players come, and then we finish the training, we go in, we have a meeting, evaluate the, how the session goes and stuff like that. So yeah, that's been uh, my day since I came for the past week. How di different is that from your experience? Obviously, you've been preparing mm. every day as a player, player every day. Like, how different is it to come out and put cones out and listen to plan uh, sessions? <laughs> well, I tell you what. Now I understand why some uh, some of the coaches they get mad when the players are messing up the session because <laughs> <laughs> you know they have, they have to come in, uh, you know, very early. You know, plan everything before the players come. I mean, when you're a player, you can. You only come like 30 or one hour before the before the training. Then after you have another few hours, then you go home. But the coaches stays for for longer. They come in early and and leave late. So. It's a different job. Yeah. Right? It's a different it's, job. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the it's same different. game, but it's a different exactly, business. Yeah. Mm. So in our convo, I want to talk a few things. I want to talk some past. I want to really focus more on now and the future. But of course, we can't really get to the future without a little bit of the past as well. Mm -hmm. So I want to find a bit. So I may go a little bit before, a bit here, but not, not, not too much. I hope that's, that's, that's okay. Okay, cool. What I, I was trying to dis describe it like you, you, you started at Liberty 98? Mm, 98, 99. Yeah. 98. Now we're in, mm -hmm. in 2020. So this is more than mm. 20 years. It's 20, 22 years you've been with this football. Oh, wow. Right, that's incredible. <laughs> that's an incredible amount of time. I was trying to describe it. It's almost like you had you've had twenty years, twenty two years of playing. Then even now, you still want to be close with the ball. You want to see the ball every day. You mm. see when it's like. <laughs> well, I would say so. I mean, uh, I'm a football man, uh, and I've loved football the whole uh, the whole of my life. So yeah, even up to now, I still want to be uh, close to the players. You know, have a kick about with them and. You know, because I mean, I love football, and even though I'm in a, in another transition in my, in my career, I still want to be around the players. You know, what's it like? What's 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 the, if if this is your wife? How would you describe your relationship with your with this your wife football? Hmm. I don't know. It'll be my wife for for life <laughs> 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 until my last day on. Uh, on F. Mm. Keeping with this idea of your football is your wife, right? Mm. Sometimes you need to freshen it up. Is this what you're doing now? Is this you freshening up the relationship a little bit? Uh, no, it's not, it's, not, it's not about freshening it up. I would say taking it to a different level uh, than what I've, I'm, I'm used to for the past uh, many years. You know, I've been, uh, I've been a player the whole time and now I'm looking to you know, change a little bit. Well, 
as you said, the same uh, game by different different work. So now I'm to uh, I'm looking to do my coaching badges. So I'm I'm learning how how everything uh, everything is done and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, it's just a little, you know, a little switch, you know, to a different level. Now, when when you see these young boys falling in love with your mm. with your wife, the football, these <laughs> young boys now, you see, you get a little jealous, like, hey, hey, hey please, <laughs> you give it, bring her back to me. Do you, do you do you miss it a little bit? I mean, uh, well, I do, I do miss it, but I mean, uh, we all know, you know, you can't play, uh, you can't play football forever. I mean, at one point, you have to, you have to change and do uh, different things. Uh, I mean, uh, you're gonna miss it, but once you're around the around the game, is is more or less the same. Because it's interesting. Obviously, you you, you play had this 20 year career, and obviously we know Ghana, we know UK, France. But what's really crazy for me is that this this love affair of yours has taken you everywhere in the world. You've been Asia. You played in the US, uh, US <laughs> preseason mm -hmm. stuff, North America. You have played South America, uh, World Cup. Uh, you, you even were gonna go to Australia, almost. <laughs> I kind of I'm feeling like if if two polar bears were in the Arctic, and they said, "Michael, we have a game." I think who would you go and play? Uh, of course, I would join them. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I've been, I've been, uh, I always have been lucky enough to you know to travel around the world with with my football, and uh, not many people have have managed to to do that. So you know, I'm privileged and. I've enjoyed every every journey that football has taken me. Do you have a favorite <laughs> or most surprising experience? Because I know you've been in Indonesia, <laughs> Azerbaijan. Like, have you? Do you have like a favorite or a couple of most surprising experiences that football has taken you to that you never thought, hey, like, where this go? Where, 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 how am I even here doing this now? Uh, yes, I've been to a few places. Like uh, when I was in Indonesia, uh, I mean, we went to this. Uh, <laughs> this village to play i mean it took us 24 hours together and can you imagine and it's the same country <laughs> it took you 24 hours 24 hours i mean i could i could go back and forth to london and back and <laughs> you know but i mean it was uh, for me it was enjoyable you know i took uh, you know it, it was another experience in my career to to see different places and how different people live and their lives and stuff like that so so, so you took 24 hours to get to mm. the game mm -hmm. what was it like when you got there no we were i mean we went three days before the game <laughs> so i mean it took us 24 hours so we get there we need some rest and then we start training and but i mean we took everything everything you can think of uh, bars train airplanes everything <laughs> to get to that village but i mean it was it was nice i kind of enjoyed the the experience there somebody told me that one time you you had you, there's a game that the players have to take a, a tank or something the army or something to even mm. get this bro this sounds crazy no i mean uh, that's when i was in uh, well, indonesia when we, we were playing against uh, our biggest rivals from uh, Jakarta, uh, they, are, they are called Pesija. I mean, it, it, get, it gets very rough. So we don't need, we don't even, they don't even call the police, they call the army. <laughs> and we have to, <laughs> they'll bring a few army tanks and we have to jump in the, in, in the tank for our own safety. A and tank yeah, tank with a tank, big proper, gun? Yeah, proper army tank. <laughs> then, then, we, then once they they take the war, <laughs> yeah. How many you football know? players can you fit in a tank, bro? Oh, like seven or eight. <laughs> <laughs> so they bring they, they bring few, like three or four, you know. Plus the motor motorbikes and everything with their guns. And wow. it, it gets very rough. It gets very rough. I mean, there's it's 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 good game but i mean then sometimes you get very sad because uh, the fans can't even fight to someone is dead For so you. yeah every every time we play them at least one uh, one fan will pass away yeah wow. and it's that it's that bad it's a good game but then to the fans it can get oh, it's very not that, rough it can't be that <coughs> serious mm. i want to talk a little bit about europe because we're in Europe, mm -hmm. obviously we've talked about Indonesia and all these other places. Can you can you tell me what it was like when you first arrived in Europe? What the experience was like for you? 
I mean, it was, uh, well, it was kind of hard and not hard because, I mean, the hardest part was uh, when I went to France, I couldn't speak the, the language, you know. So for me, that would be the hardest, hardest part. And obviously, the only thing I could eat is rice and chicken. <laughs> But that food side, it didn't, it didn't kind of bother me at all. But it, it was the language, uh, babe, because, I mean, once I'm on the pitch, I'm happy, you know, with my teammates, you know, yeah. training and playing. But then uh, they have to find me a, a professor, a teacher who can uh, teach me the, the language. Mm -hmm. And so after every training session, I'll have like uh, another two, three hours, you know, learning the the language, the French language, and after what, six, seven months, I could practically understand everything. So. And then I start speaking. So. <clears throat> because that, that, was yeah. Bas that was Bastille, right? Like, yeah. So what was the first things you learned in French? Like uh, pou poulet et riz, rice and, rice and chicken? No, the, <laughs> <laughs> no, the first thing you learn is uh, bonjour, you know, bonjour, comment ça va, ça va bien. And then, then the rest follows. Obviously, this is a, a very common theme for all your generation who, mm. who played in Europe. You know, you all, you came up with the same and then you all had to travel. Mm -hmm. Did you, do you remember like, either before you left, were there any players who left for Europe before you? Were you discussing, Charlie, what's it gonna be like when we get there? Do you remember any of these kind of conversations? Not really? <laughs> or did anybody else go and then call you and say, hey, it's crazy, I don't come to Europe, when <laughs> <laughs> No, not really, but I mean, uh, a couple of my, my mates went before, before I, I went, and uh, I remember talking to uh, Derek Burton and uh, Razak Ibrahim, because they went uh, before me, and I mean, they were happy. You know, they were happy, and uh, as a kid, uh, you know, our, uh, our dream is to come to Europe and uh, play in uh, proper professional football, so, yeah. Mm. How do you, because now obviously you're, you're, you're here, mm -hmm. and we're, we're looking at these boys, obviously, the, the, I know you're coaching the whole team, but obviously there's a specific connection with, with the boys from Africa. There's a lot of boys from Ghana, mostly Ivorians here. How do you compare that journey that you had and your generation, you talk about Derek, mm. Isaac and these guys, and I know obviously Steven, Gwen and Suli and all those guys came after you. Um, how do you compare the, that journey in your time? <laughs> and then coming <laughs> to, 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 to these guys and, and their journey as you're seeing it. I don't know, I would say, I cannot really compare because uh, as, as you can see, it's uh, generations, you know, and uh, well, our generation, we didn't have it like uh, the way the, uh, the new generations are having now because, I mean, they've got everything, they've got the coaches who can, you know, who teach them, you know, every single, single, like, little things, you know, but ours, we have to... You know, we have to do it in a, in a hard way. No one will... Uh, really tell you like control the ball this way that you just have to you know find your own way of doing it and i mean it works for us or some of us but these new generations i mean they have everything all the facilities and everything the medical stuff and you know everyone is there to help them so they have to take a very good advantage of it would you say that uh, right the dream have a, a a unique pathway for african players in, in how you've seen it now that you've been around them? I mean, it is, it is very unique. And uh, I mean, what Right to Dream is, is doing, uh, not many people can do it. I mean, uh, it's not only about football. They help other kids to, to master their educations and stuff like that. And also, obviously, uh, you know, they bring in a lot of uh, young boys from, uh, from Africa, so it's, it's good and right to dream is giving them everything. You know, if you want to play football, they will help you develop your game. If you want to, you know, follow an academical level, they will they will help you as well. So it's, I mean, it's a very fantastic thing they are doing. And as I said, not many many people will do that. So because obviously they have, like you said, the football <laughs> education. Then they have mm. this character, this mm -hmm. whole your behavior, your yeah. mind, your thinking. How how is that? Do, do you, how important do you think? this aspect of it as, as well? I mean, it's good. They, well, they are, they are right to dream is giving uh, 
everything the young boys uh, need, you know, as you said, character education. Here nowadays, who is going to teach you how to, you know? You just have to find it in, uh, in your own way, because, you know, back in the days, if you, misbehave, you misbehave. Anyone can smack you, or, you know? But nowadays, it's not the same. So, I mean, they're bringing this character education, and it's, it's all to help the to help them, to help the players develop. What do you think these boys coming from Africa specifically? Obviously, the boys here in Denmark and other places in Europe, we have Americans mm -hmm. here. They have a slightly different mm -hmm. journey and a route to it. Um, what, what do you think, and uh, this is obviously one that you will know that's followed your path, what do you think the boys coming from Africa really need to make this transition successful? And what do you think your role being here will be in helping that transition be successful? I mean, uh, well, my role is quite, is quite simple. I mean, sharing my experience with them, advising them uh, uh, where they need to, uh, and uh, trying to, uh, where they are quite weak, try to improve, uh, help them improve uh, in, in those aspects as well. And also, I mean, as you said, I'm, it's another transition in my career. So, I mean, doing that, I'm learning, uh, I'm learning as well, so, I mean, uh, f for the boys, they have everything. Uh, everything is in, is in their disposal, and they have to take good uh, advantage of it and make good use of it. I've seen you walking around. You might not notice it, but I see how some of the boys have looked at you. I see you on the training pitch and everything. I, I know, for example, say Clinton. Clinton is a massive Chelsea fan, and he's a Chelsea fan mm. because of me. <laughs> I told you already, it's your fault. It's your fault. If it wasn't you, you could be with Arsenal or somebody. But what do you think it's like for somebody like him to train and work with essentially his idol? Uh, probably, yes. Uh, probably, I mean, it's good for him because, well, as you said, he's been uh, he's, uh, through Chelsea. Uh, well, obviously, because of me, he, he became a Chelsea fan. So. I mean, having me around, I mean, they, they come around and ask me uh, a lot of questions, you know. They ask a lot and uh, they take the little information that I, I give them. So, I mean, uh, it's, it's good because me, I was the same. I was the same when I went to Bastia. I mean, Bastia didn't have uh, big uh, stars, but I mean, training uh, and playing with the first team uh, players was. It was massive for me, and I have to learn from them. So. Who were your idols when you were a kid? Because obviously, Clinton has said that you were his. I know it might be, it's a bit weird. I don't even know what I'll do if somebody says, oh, you're my idol. I'm like, what, what do you want me to do? <laughs> um, uh, who were your idols growing up? And, and what would it have been like at a young age if you would have been able to have access and learn from them, like these guys, for you? Ooh, I mean, uh, I don't know, I don't really have someone in particular, but I mean, I love uh, footballers in general. And uh, I mean, uh, we have a lot of footballers, like you mentioned, Abedi Pele, Tony Boys, and you know, Osei Kufu and them lot. You know, you see, we see them on TV and we want to be, uh, be like them one day. You know, and obviously we watch uh, <clears throat> a lot of European football as well. And, you know, uh, the likes of Z Zidane and them lot. So, uh, and me being a Milford, I used to I used to love uh, a few Milfords actually. Patrick Vieira, uh, Paul Scholes, Roy, Roy Keane. You know the hard guys, Edgar Davies and them lot. So you see them uh, playing, you try to pick one or one or two things from them, and you add it to your game. Yeah. What would it have been? What do you <laughs> think? I mean, we don't know, but how do you think it could have affected you or impacted your career if you? Had a Vieira or uh, come and talk to you, like and and give you advice like this, because this is the same here. I actually, actually, I played against him and he did actually, but you know, it was, I just have to listen to what he says and you know, take a few words from him. And and obviously, I, I was lucky enough to play with Makalele as well. Mm. You know, one of the the big legends in the in in the game. And, uh, you know, so I've been lucky enough to, you know, play with and against some big legends in the game. I'm glad you used that mm -hmm. word. 
and I want you to forgive me <laughs> because you know I know <laughs> you're a humble guy and you like to keep it you like to keep it cool and so you're gonna have to just just leave me let mm. me celebrate you a little bit please celebrate who celebrate you oh why because uh, then you, I'm not dead yet too. <laughs> you're not no but this is why this is the problem and this, this is the problem I don't know if this is a, I don't know if this is a Ghanaian thing like, no it's, a, it's, it's like not only Ghanaian you want to celebrate every everybody after when they are gone, gone. Yeah. Right? And we have this expression, you need uh, to give me the flowers now. You want uh, to put flowers uh, on my bed. Come I'm and dead. bring me flowers. Let me, <laughs> let me smell them, you know? So let me give you some flowers. Mm -hmm. Some small flowers. Mm -hmm. Because for me, and I love Stephen Apia, and obviously and I love Abedi Pele, and I love Suli, mm -hmm. and Kevin Prince, and all these guys. For me, you're the greatest player Ghana's created. Oof. That's, that's a, my opinion. That's a big you can't, you can't change it. It's my opinion. You're the greatest player that we've created. That's why I'm so upset when you went to Chelsea. But anyway, for me, you're, 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 you're a Ghanaian. Well, you couldn't afford me anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but for me, you're, you're, you're unequivocal. You're a Ghanaian mm -hmm. legend. You're mm -hmm. an African legend. You're a Premier League legend. You're one of the best players to play in the Premier League. You're a Champions League winner. Who, who gave you all these stats? I mean, it's not stats. It's just the truth. I didn't need to read. Me, oh, I know. Okay. For somebody like you, who is so humble, what is it like when somebody calls you a legend? How does this feel? To be honest, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how to react to it because most of the time I say, "My well, my name is Michael." There's no legend attached to my name, but I mean, you can, as you said, it's your opinion. You can change uh, people's opinion, isn't it? so you just have to embrace it and say thank you. Do you feel? Do you feel that you've had the recognition that you deserve? Because I feel that because you're so humble, maybe sometimes when people are having conversations about who's the best, who's the greatest, maybe sometimes they don't mention. Mm -hmm. Maybe like people who know Chelsea fans. If I ask a Chelsea <laughs> fan, I'll tell them, "Well, oh, I'm talking to Michael today." They're welcome. <laughs> Ghana fans, they know. Leon fans, they know. <laughs> but when we're talking generally in football, you're one of the best uh, central midfielders that we've, we've produced from Africa that have played in the Premier League, that have played <laughs> in the French League, and there have been some big players. Do you feel you've had... Do you feel you've had that recognition? And I know, and I know it's not even important <laughs> to you to have that recognition, but do you feel... <laughs> <laughs> Me, really, it doesn't... Uh, to be honest, it doesn't really make any difference in my or in my life or in my career. I'm just a football man. I just, I just want to play football. The rest, I don't really pay much attention to it because I just love football. I just want to play. So that's, that's what I've, I've done the whole of my career. Just, you know, concentrate in my, in my game and that's it. And just win. And just win, of course, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> See, now this is great because <laughs> Everybody knows the, the first word everyone will say is humble. Even when people are like, oh my God, Michael, is here at this club. They're whispering, you know, and like, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's walking around like he's the biggest player that's played in Denmark. Or, or he's the biggest name that's been at a club in Denmark. Um, how do you maintain being humble, for one? How do you do it? And why is it important to you to be humble? Because you don't have to be. Well, I don't... It's not like I do it on purpose. It's just, it's just the way I am. It's just my character. Uh, probably the way I was I was raised, and you know I've always been the you know the reserved one. You know, unless those who really know me, they know you know I'm I'm a bit chatty with them. But apart from that, like when I'm out, I'm very quiet. When I don't really know people, I just say hello and uh, you know say my corner. You talk about how you were raised. <laughs> Tell me how you were raised, because let's give us the insight. To you, what is it from your <laughs> upbringing that is because the two things that your upbringing has done is one, it's created one of the most successful athletes ever, right? One of the most successful athletes to come from Ghana. Two, it's created one of the most humble and likable, calm uh, people at the same time. Normally, the two things you <laughs> don't get. So, tell me about this upbringing. How did how did how did we get to this? What is it in your upbringing in your journey that made this? Uh, I don't know, but I mean, growing up back back home in Ghana is, I mean, you know, you have to be very uh, respectful and uh, be humble to anyone, you see. I mean, any elderly person can call you and send you, uh, go and buy me 
water and you have to take the money around you know, and bring it. So oh, thank you, you know. Even you have to thank him. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, these things, uh, you grew up with these things, and uh, obviously I came to Europe when I was, uh, well, I was almost 18. Uh, so I came, uh, you know, and uh, I learned, you know, the mentality here, and, I, and so I combined everything, and, you know, I see some of the big, uh, Legends, as you say, the big names you come and see, they'll be riding their bicycle to training. You know, whereby some uh, uh, people will see them in a Lamborghini. <laughs> but, you know, you learn those things, and I mean, you see some, some rich, worthy people, and they are very, very normal. When as Africans, you see them, you know, they are rich, you have to be. So, these things, you pick up these things, and it makes you realize it just is in life everyone is normal. Everyone is normal. We are all human beings. Do you have any <laughs> any proverbs or sayings? Because I know we have them. You know, the, the village raises the child. My dad always mm -hmm. say to me, "If you show me your friends, I'll show you your character." I don't mm -hmm. know if you know show this me one. your friends. <laughs> show me your friends. <laughs> and I'll tell you who you are. Yeah, show me your friends. I'll tell you. Uh, um, what's the, the, the other one? My, my dad's favorite one was um, when teeth, 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 man. Uh. God laugh. <laughs> Do you have any? Do you, do you have any that people used to say to you growing up that always kind of come to your mind? Oof. Yeah. Yeah, hold up, I can't think of any now. You weren't listening. Yeah. I was listening, but you know, you always hear so many things, so many different <laughs> things, and you know. Anyway. Take me back to this kid in Ghana quickly, just a little bit. I'm looking at these little kids mm. out here, so it's making me think of you. Um, and we talk. It's called right to dream. So it's a little, you know, we have a dream. Mm. Do you remember, do you remember your dream? Mm -hmm. Like, so you're a little kid who mm -hmm. fell in love with this football, right? When you had this, when you were this kid with this ball, do you remember what your dream was? Was your dream, I'm going to buy a fast car, or I'm going to buy mm -hmm. my mother's house, or I'm going to win the Champions League? Do you actually remember holding the ball or playing the ball and thinking, eh, one day if I'm going to, me, I'm going to, uh, do, do you remember? Mm -hmm. <coughs> For me, it was all about football. I just want to play football, and uh, my dream is to come to come to Europe and uh, you know have a, a better football. And that was it. I didn't know I was I was gonna win uh, Champions League. Or I didn't know. Actually, I knew about Champions League in what, 1993 when Marseille won. I didn't know anything about. I, I didn't know. And back then, I know there's a big game. It was after the game. They explained to me, hey, this is Champions League. At that time, I didn't even know. <laughs> I didn't even know what was that. I knew there's a big game going on. There's a final. I didn't even watch it. You know, back then, in the village, you don't even have TV. So, and then later, part there, so, oh. Ah, Billy Pele, Mercedes say they won Champions League. Bazi Boli. Oh, okay. They beat Milan. Yeah. Okay. So your 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 mm -hmm. dream was to be a professional footballer. Okay. Yeah. That was your dream. That mm -hmm. was the dream, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't specific Champions League. When did you start understanding that this dream was gonna be real? It could be real. Actually, uh. I go that when uh, when I go a call to go to the under seventeen uh, in uh, we staying in Winneba. That's when I realized, oh, this is getting serious now. So I have to I have to take it serious. I mean, I love football. I play, you know, in my school team everywhere. You know, in school team. I do everything: playing football, playing volleyball, table tennis, and them. Like, <clears throat> but obviously I was good at football, so then the call, the call up came, and obviously you understand you, when you go you get a call up to go to the under 17s, it's not <laughs> it's not easy. So actually, when the call came, it was later actually because back then we didn't really have uh, uh, mobile phones and them lot. So and I told my mom I'm not going. 
she said, why? I said, this, they will keep you there for, for, for a year plus. Then they will bring in the, the young ones who are playing in the, in the Premier League in Ghana to come and take your place. So I don't think I'm going to go. Oh, she said, okay, you know better than me. So anyway, I continue. <laughs> I was at home for like a month. And then uh, Sly Tete came, uh, one of my mentors, yeah. And then uh, she actually came to visit my mom and I was there. And he was angry. He said, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be in Winneba. And I said, I know, but I told my mom I'm not going. He said, are you mad? He put me in the car straight to Winneba. So I was the last to report. So anyway, I got there and I knew for, that's when I knew this is gonna be serious. I have to, I have to be serious. But back, back days, I didn't even like training. <laughs> but everything changes when I went to, uh, to Winneba with the National Under-17s, yeah. And uh, I was the only player who kept his position from day one to the last, to the last day. Because we have many people coming through. Every week, at least six, seven players will go home. And the same week, another seven will come. We are about more than 50. And you know how, how, how it's like. Well, I was the only player who kept my place from the very first day I arrived. So, so. Bro, do you know how <laughs> mind-blowing it is that it almost didn't happen. If you, if, if yeah. Tete didn't come. Exactly. Johnny, you almost mm -hmm. ended your career before. Yeah, before I started. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. Was there a point <clears throat> when you were in Europe, right? Was there a point, I don't know, is when you were winning leagues at Lyon or when you realized that you'd actually achieved your dream? Was there a point, was there something, or was it like you could afford to do something, or that you thought, hey, Michael, what your idea? You've done, <laughs> you've achieved something. Because you probably didn't even know how far it could go, but, you know, mm. what I found with dreams is that dreams grow and change. So there's a point where your dream is, let me get down to 17. Your dream is, let me play for the first team. Your dream is, you know, <laughs> and, and they grow. So was there a point when that dream of you getting to Europe, was there a point where you were like, yeah, I've, I've, I've done it, I've, I've achieved it, I've, I've, I've done that? Actually, no, it didn't cross my mind because uh, I mean, when I came to Europe, I, was, I got used to the competitions and I know uh, I still have, need to work hard because I still have uh, many years ahead of me. And, you know, I, I don't want it to be just one of, so it was, uh, <clears throat> I even worked harder, you know, so, and obviously the rest came without even me thinking or really, you know, thinking about it. I don't even realize what, what I've done, but I mean, uh, a lot of people knows <clears throat> about the, the stats, you know, because, me, I just play football and that's it. You know, the other day, uh, uh, our coach Fleming was asking me, uh, he said, he told me uh, I'm the only player who, who never lost against Messi. I didn't even know. So I, he said, well, I played him uh, eight times or so. Eight times, yeah. Four or five wins in the draw, the rest is draw. So I was did, like, okay. Did you play him at Lyon? Did you play them at Lyon as well, no. or just Chelsea? Because I remember that period yeah, of Chelsea, Messi, Messi couldn't yeah. score against you guys. So apparently I'm the only player who never lost against him. There's another stat. <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you should phone him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you never beat me. Yeah. <laughs> so it, was, it was quite interesting. I didn't even know. I've never heard anything like that before. I so, didn't even know that. You talked yeah. about Fleming, it's interesting. So, so now you're in Denmark. Mm. Now we're here, we talked a little bit about the past. Why are you here? I mean, uh, there's a whole lot of reason why I'm here. 
I mean, as I said before, uh, I'm in this transition in my career, you know, learning about the coaching aspect of the game. And obviously, <clears throat> uh, right to dream and FC New Zealand gave me this uh, huge opportunity, you know, you know, not many people will have this, uh, this opportunity to come, uh, to come in here and, uh, and learn and see how they do things here, you know, and uh, obviously I know Tom, I've been, I've been speaking with Tom for many years ago. So yeah, I decided to, to come. And so I came, I met the staff, the players, and everyone was, was very lo lovely, you know, uh, with me and everyone is willing to help. And I mean, Fleming is, he's an he's amazing coach, amazing manager. And, you know, he uh, allows me to, you know, voice some opinions and ask for my opinions and stuff like that. So, I mean, I cannot turn this, uh, this big opportunity now, you know, is something I have, uh, I'm learning to in my, in my next uh, step in my career, so. You know, it's funny, you speak <laughs> so highly of Fleming. Obviously, you mm. played with Ancelotti, you played with Mourinho, you played with some really top, top coaches. I mean, it was Paul Gwen at, <laughs> at, at, at Lyon, wasn't mm. it? Um, how, how, does, how does Fleming compare? To that because now you actually now you, <laughs> you can appreciate the coaching in yeah. a different way right you're looking i mean every every everyone is different every coach is different and uh you know here is 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 more about developing the players than you know than you know aiming for big uh, trophies or buy big players but <clears throat> so it's all about developing the players and for me i think Fleming is is one of the well, the best to in the in the aspect of developing uh, young talent, and you know, for him to give me that opportunity to come and work with him, and you know, be around there. everyone here is is great because not not many managers will give uh, these opportunities to uh, most of the ex players. Now. So we talked mm -hmm. about the the uh, right to dream and the club being a, a, a unique, like a uh, pathway or way for African players. When I look at you, um, I look at Coach Didi, who's a legend. Didi Jumani is a he's an absolute legend and such a lovely person. I know um, Otto Ado was here before. Do you do you think this is becoming like a a unique opportunity for African coaches as well here at this club? I mean, well. I would say I would say yes, but it's really it's not only about, about African coaches or African players. It's in general. I mean the 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 Danes who are here and uh, and the players. So everyone is here to to develop, you know, to become uh, someone in future. So it's it's very open to uh, to everyone actually, and obviously they have their. The academy in, in in Ghana and you know and try to help uh, help the kids and as I said earlier on it's not only about football football there's a whole lot of things you know so I mean it's it's very good thing they are doing and yeah it's interesting because I look because obviously <coughs> you played we're not, we're not we haven't got too many more I know we've been talking mm -hmm. for a while um, you played with lots of really top players and and I've seen transition sorry like you you, you played with Janino. Now Janine mm. was a sports director at Lyon. You played with Manu. Mm -hmm. you, you were in the midfield, probably one of the best, mm -hmm. uh, most successful midfields in the Premier League with, with Lampard. Now Lampard's mm. the, 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 the coach of, of Chelsea. So then you've got like the South Americans play, mm -hmm. make the transition. The, the, the Europeans play, make the transition. The Africans haven't, who've played at the top level in the same, same teams, won the same trophies, mm -hmm. had the same experience, haven't been making, haven't been given the same opportunities, I think, in my opinion, to to make this transition, why, why do you think that that is, and and, and how do we change this? Um, this, well, that's one of the issues that's going around football nowadays, isn't it? But I mean, uh, when you really look at it, no. Back then, not many uh, African players want to make that transition into into coaching. You know, they finish their career, they finish. But now it's changing, it's changing, but obviously uh, uh, they are looking for, for opportunities which is not coming and it's been, 
a very big issue, but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure with time, things will change. And I mean, the, you know, when you want something that hard, you have to work harder. You don't give up. So I'm sure one day uh, there will be a big changes. Would you say that maybe fo <coughs> football world is missing on a big opportunity for coaches from Africa? Because the knowledge, if you understand the knowledge of football that mm -hmm. we have in Africa, the passion as fans all the way to the skill as players, do you think there's a big, they're missing out on not encouraging or, or not allowing more opportunities for, for African coaches, or African players to make that transition mm -hmm. into coaching, into management, into, into technical directors, all of that? Well, I don't, I don't, well, I don't think it's, uh, it's them giving them the chances, what the players are willing to do. I mean, uh, as I said before, not many uh, will even make that transition into coaching. It just recently uh, start, start changing. So, uh, as I said, who knows? We have to keep pushing and uh, hopefully uh, the changes will come. It's, it's all about the it's all about the timing, isn't it? So timing. It will come, I'm sure. I only have a few more because I know mm. I've taken your time. You are a busy man. You've been training. You want to <laughs> go relax. So I have a few more. I just want to talk to you about you because you're like a father figure here. When I talk to some of the boys, you know, and how they respect you, I'm, I'm, you. I'm, I'm their brother, like no, a fine. big brother. It's not that yeah. you're not old enough to be their dad, <laughs> but you know, it's like that. But but. <laughs> The interesting thing is you are mm -hmm. a dad, like me, I'm mm -hmm. more so a father. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm, I, I hear myself talking to my kids and I, I can hear my dad's voice. I can hear my dad's words. I'm like, ah, who said that? Like, <laughs> when, 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 why am I saying, oh, YouTube, yeah. so, so making this noise? I'm like, wait, wait, hey, that's not me. I'm, I'm, I'm cool, I'm young, I'm, you know. Yeah. Um, I know your youngest boy plays, plays football as well. Mm -hmm. What are you like? as a dad on the sideline watching? What's it, what's it like being the son of the, one of the best footballers? <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I, I, won't, I won't talk when, I'm, when I see him play. I don't see anything. But it's only after the, after the game, you know, that I get kind of a bit, <laughs> a bit too, too harsh on him. Because, I mean, sometimes I forget he's only here. Uh, it's only a little, but I mean, with my, with my mentality, with my mindset, I'm a, I'm a winner and I always want to win, you know, but then I have to look, know that he's still a, he's still a baby. <laughs> so yeah. your, 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 your assessment is tough, harsh. Yeah, it, uh, it's tough. I have to learn it. I have to learn the hard way. So, uh, but um, I can be quite tough, yeah. Do you think you're going to bring this because you played hard mm. and you win? You know how to win. Mm. Like, you either know how to win or you don't. Like, you can <laughs> be a great player, but you don't necessarily mm. mean you're going to win. You know how to win and you know how tough it is. And, it, and <laughs> you talked about the journey to get to where you are. Do you think that's something you're going to bring into your coaching? And is that something that you, you're looking to instill here? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's, <clears throat> well, as you said, uh, those things are in me, even though I might be very quiet outside. But when I'm on the pitch, everything changes. So that winning mentality and working hard, going strong is, is in me. So uh, and I, you can't take that <laughs> from me. So yeah, that's, that's one of the things I'm trying to, you know, you know, encourage the boys to do. And obviously, when I'm done with my badges and stuff like that, it will, it will always going to be there. So, yeah. Uh, I might be quiet, but tough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody doesn't think you're tough, bro. <laughs> <laughs> when you see me playing, then you know I'm tough. You know? My brother Michael, my, my legend, mm. my, my Ghanaian legend, should have been an Arsenal legend, but anyway, my Premier League legend. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for taking some time, bro. I really thank you. It. Thank you. Uh, thank, thanks for having time. me. It's Corona time, so I would normally give you a big mm. hug, but let me give you this at home. Yeah, we do, we do this, yeah. yeah. Corona. Don't worry, Corona will go away soon and we'll have our lives back. Let's hope so. Be positive. <laughs>